fell behind to newly promoted Darlington just after the interval, when Alex Watson put through his own goal. And they conceded a second goal from a free kick, Paul Willis reacting quickest to beat Vince Bartram. New signing Mark Morris scored Bournemouth's consolation goal seven minutes from the end. Final score Bournemouth 1, Darlington 2. Paul Morell opened the scoring for Bournemouth with a 25-yard strike. But Cardiff's new signing Paul Miller equalised a minute from half-time. And within five minutes of the restart, City had swept into the lead through Roger Gibbons. And just 60 seconds later, Cardiff's Damon Searle fired in a 20-yard effort. But Bournemouth substitute Keith Rowlands grabbed Bournemouth's all-important second goal to open up the tie. Cardiff 3, Bournemouth 2. At Dean Court, Bournemouth started with a 3-2 deficit, but took the lead on the night through Andy Jones. But Cardiff were awarded a penalty for a Kevin Bond foul. Mark Jones stepped up for the spot kick. But the second half belonged to Bournemouth. Jimmy Quinn touched home from a Jimmy Case corner. And Alec Watson headed in from another Case corner 15 minutes later. Then 10 minutes from the end, Bournemouth sealed the tie as Welsh international striker Jones grabbed his second. Final score, Bournemouth 4, Cardiff 1. Bournemouth go through 6-4 on aggregate. Bournemouth were held to a goalless draw, though they dominated much of the game against Hull. Jimmy Quinn with the best effort in the 48th minute. And despite pressure from the Cherries right to the end, the score remained Bournemouth nil, Hull nil. Bournemouth went in front at Preston with a goal set up by Andy Jones and converted by Matthew Holmes. They held that lead until the 76th minute when the Bournemouth defence failed to clear and winger Martin James thumped in the equaliser. Six minutes later, Preston were ahead and again Bournemouth defenders were to blame, allowing Nigel Greenwood time and space to score from close range. But in the final minute, a free kick special from Jimmy Case and Bournemouth a draw. Final score, Preston 2, Bournemouth 2. Bournemouth gained their first league win of the season at Chester, but only 1,100 fans were there to see it. They took the lead 17 minutes from the end when George Lawrence created the opening for Sean O'Driscoll to score with a low shot. Jimmy Case almost got a second, but his powerful drive was pushed over by Stewart. Final score, Chester City nil, Bournemouth 1. Bournemouth captain Jimmy Case was sent off after a clash with Shrewsbury's Mark Taylor. The challenge left Taylor needing lengthy treatment from the trainer. The referee ruled that Case had deliberately elbowed his opponent, but his dismissal brought angry protests from the crowd. Despite being down to ten men, Bournemouth got the only goal in the 66th minute, with a header from defender Mark Morris. Final result, Bournemouth 1, Shrewsbury 0, and the Cherries' first home win of the season. Bournemouth produced a magnificent display at Ayrson Park to force a draw against Middlesbrough. Jimmy Case almost put them ahead with his powerful free kick. And Jimmy Quinn went even closer with this shot off the bar. Then ten minutes from the end, Paul Wilkinson headed what looked like Middlesbrough's winner. But in injury time, they conceded their first goal at home this season, when Bournemouth substitute George Lawrence made the final score one all. Last night, Bournemouth were knocked out of the competition by Division 2 leaders Middlesbrough, but they gave one of their best displays of the season and were only beaten by a penalty in extra time. Bournemouth nearly found themselves behind early on after a dreadful mix-up in defence. Kevin Bond's back pass had Vince Bartram scrambling back to the line. Middlesbrough were in control in the first half and took the lead from a corner, John Hendry at the far post. But in the second half, the Cherries completely dominated. It took a brilliant save from keeper Steve Pears to keep out Paul Wood. And Burroughs' goal was under constant attack. This effort from Jimmy Quinn, though, was easily dealt with. But it was only a matter of time before Bournemouth drew level. Again, Pears pulled off a magnificent save. 
And while he was dusting himself down and players appealed for a corner, the game continued. Keith Rowland crossed from the left. The ball fell to Quinn, who cut inside two challengers to score. 1-1 at the end of ordinary time and as manager Harry Redknapp prepared the team for another 30 minutes play, the Cherries must have been confident of their chances. But it was to be the cruelest of finishes. Three minutes from time, defender Roland nudged Hendry in the area. Gary Parkinson stepped up for the spot kick. 2-1 to Middlesbrough, the final score and a disappointing way for the game to end. It was, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody was suddenly waiting for penalties and uh, I'm sitting there thinking who's going to take our penalties and we're trying to work out the order of penalty takers almost, you know, and suddenly they got that penalty. I couldn't see them scoring. That they, I thought they'd gone a bit, really, and, and there was only one team going to win it as a game war and that was going to be us, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't to be. But we've got to take heart from that. I think the supporters have got to take heart from that and realise that, uh, that we are capable of beating anybody if we play like we did in that, that second half and that looked like, two periods of extra time and we've got Hartley Pauls here Saturday. If the supporters can come get behind us again, I'm sure we can, we can, we can beat them Saturday. Bournemouth had most of the play in the first half and took the lead in the 19th minute through Matthew Holmes' powerful shot. In the second half, Hartley Paul were reduced to 10 men when Mick Smith punched Jimmy Quinn after the ball had gone. Smith was shown the red card. A minute from time, great skills from Denny Mundy and his low cross converted by Quinn. Final score, Bournemouth 2, Hartlepool 0. Bournemouth travelled to London and took the lead against Leighton Orient. Jimmy Quinn with an angled shot from 12 yards. 1-0 at half time, but the Cherries were denied all three points when Steve Castle levelled with a superb left foot volley. Final score, Leighton Orient 1, Bournemouth 1. Last night, in a game played in gale force winds, Sonia Legg reports. The high wind almost helped Bournemouth take an early lead. Goalkeeper Vince Bartram's kick carried the full length of the field, bouncing just over the bar. Paul Wood's strong running nearly brought a goal, his shot drifting just wide of the far post. Bournemouth took the lead though after 53 minutes when Stockport conceded a needless corner. Wood took the kick and defender Mark Morris scored with a close range header. But 10 minutes from time, Stockport's Jim Gannon was denied an equaliser by Bartram's fine tip over. And at the other end, Neil Edwards produced an equally good save to foil Jimmy Quinn. Final score, Bournemouth 1, Stockport 0. Swansea yeah. and they're all white as usual. Yep. Um, they what about the league Swansea? They go one up. They, yeah, bottom of the league, but Derek Brazil there, not Alan, knocks one in. Oh, just before half time? Yeah. And they look as though they won this fairly comfortably, don't they? Keith Walker coming in here. A little tough. And there he was a sub, so he went on very long before he notched, obviously, I wouldn't have thought. Got 14 on his back. So, six minutes from the end. Uh, John Williams, good yeah, sort well of goal this year. This is it? a well taken goal, this, isn't it? That, that, that's, a, that's a good goal by, by uh, Johnny, Johnny Williams there. And Bournemouth, would you believe, would you believe that Bournemouth do score a goal here? Actually? Yeah, they've got a lot of big names at the club, Jim. Uh, Jimmy well, Quinn here Jimmy Quinn. in the last minute. Takes it well one. as well, actually. Uh -huh. uh, that's uh, Swansea, who have not been going so well. Beat him. Close quarters. The St John Ambulance Brigade, part of the furniture at every football ground. Few fans take a lot of notice, unless they're in trouble. Without them, there'd be no match. There must be one ambulance official on duty for every 1,000 spectators. And today and next Saturday are the first St John days at the 84 league grounds they service. It may come as a shock to discover the brigade is an entirely voluntary organisation. They do it all for nothing. They're a registered charity, and with ambulances costing £30,000 apiece, they need every penny. And now football fans have a chance to show their gratitude. We all would love to feel that if everybody paid 50 pence per person coming in, how marvellous that would be. There's the gate per weekend is something like half a million, so over the two weekends that would be a million 50 p's. It would be fantastic. At the moment, we're only paid less than one pence per person coming into the ground for the first aid cover. Okay. Ted Scammell, the county staff officer, is in charge of the brigade at Dean Court. So you've got uh, each corner to cover, stretcher and a blanket between the two, and we can go out one on each corner. Okay? 
Right, off we go then. And typically, the brigade is there, maintaining a low-key presence as Bournemouth and Brentford leave the dressing rooms. Bournemouth are gripped by a terrible run of injuries. Harry Redknapp's got six first-team regulars missing. Case picks out Mark Morris from his corner, and that's a kind deflection for the third division leaders. With Kevin Bond in fine form at the back, Case and Paul Wood driving them on, Bournemouth get the better of the first half, and Perry Suckling has to get down quickly, as a shot from Matthew Holmes takes a deflection. And appropriately, it's the brigade band that takes centre stage at half-time. Early in the second half, a sweeping Bournemouth attack. Superb one-touch stuff, and it ends with a fierce drive from the lively Denny Mundy that's too hot for Suckling to hold. If Simon Radcliffe had been a bit steadier, the Bees could have nicked it. But it's a goalless draw. 4,764 fans leave the ground safe and well. For St John, a drop in the ocean of the four million hours their members give up every year. I hope everybody realises that anybody who wears a St John ambulance uniform is totally voluntary. None of us get paid one single penny. We're not part of the national health. We're not government funded. Any money that we get it has to be fundraised by ourselves. We're very good first aiders, but we're incredibly poor uh, fundraisers. And uh, therefore tonight and for the next two weeks, it's going to be fantastic for St John. Oh, well, Sockenau and Bournemouth held the Division 3 leaders Brentford to a goalless draw at Dean Court last night. Jeremy Pierce reports. Brentford have already won five away games this season and Dean Holdsworth was denied his 20th goal by Vince Bartram after just four minutes. Bournemouth went close when Jimmy Casey's corner was headed just over by Mark Morris. Bournemouth continued to press in the second half with Denny Mundy's fierce shot being turned aside by Perry Suckling. But Brentford missed the best chance of the match when Simon Ratcliffe shot over from just three yards out. And Bournemouth's Paul Wood was also guilty of an equally bad miss late on, shooting into the side netting. Final score, Bournemouth nil, Brentford nil. In the third division, the much-needed victory for Bournemouth. Denny Mundy with their winner at Gig Lane, Berry nil, Bournemouth won. What entertainment they served up, 17 goals in all and some great fight backs. Cardiff City beat the icy conditions and staged their tie at Ninian Park with Bournemouth and they were soon rewarded some good anticipation from Carl Dale. Cardiff ahead after eight minutes and moments later they were two up. The hard work this time came from Dale, the finish from Chris Pike. Pike and Dale, 26 goals between them this season and as the Bournemouth defence struggled to keep its feet, there was no stopping the Welshman, Pike and Dale combining again for number 27. Dale the scorer, 15 minutes gone, Cardiff three up. But the third division side hit back strongly, defender Denny Mundy popped up in the penalty area and cut the deficit. With half time still nine minutes away, Jimmy Quinn teed up Ifan Ikuku for a second. 3-2 at the break. And the Bournemouth equaliser followed shortly after the restart. A patient build-up and a class finish from Quinn. Cardiff City 3, Bournemouth 3 and both teams go through. Bournemouth football manager Harry Redknapp has been working without pay this season in an effort to help the club through its financial crisis. Redknapp today declined to comment on the matter, but it's understood it was his decision to forego his salary. And it's understood he will be paid what's owed to him when the situation at the club improves. Bournemouth, who are two and a half million pounds in debt, gave Harry and their fans something to cheer about when they beat Birmingham City, one of the third division's promotion contenders. Bournemouth went in front at Dean Court, courtesy of poor Birmingham defending. Paul Wood capitalising on the mistake to go on and score. Four minutes into the second half, Birmingham were level. John Paskin lobbed over Vince Bartram, who was caught off his line. But Bournemouth grabbed the winner with 17 minutes left. 
Jimmy Quinn with his 12th goal of the season. Bournemouth 2, Birmingham 1. Bournemouth made the long trip to Hull worthwhile by winning their third away game of the season. The only goal of the match came in the second half through top scorer Jimmy Quinn. It was his 13th goal of the season. Final score, Hull nil, Bournemouth 1. Bournemouth's tie with Bromsgrove had giant killing written on it when Mark Crisp won a penalty for the Midlands side after 16 minutes and Sean O'Meara scored from the spot. Bournemouth didn't equalise until the 62nd minute when they did it was a scramble until Kevin Vaughan forced the ball home. The Cherries were ahead three minutes later but only after a penalty award that seemed generous when Wood was brought down. Denny Mundy made sure it wasn't wasted. Ten minutes from time, another penalty for Cherries, this time Holmes was the player judged for being fouled. Monday was again on target and Bournemouth's blushes were spared. Bournemouth's match with the third division leaders Brentford at Dean Court provided a moment which a question of sport will surely delight in using for their what happened next spot. The Brentford fullback Jamie Bates, spotting Bournemouth's Vince Bartram off his line, decided on a 50-yard pot at goal. Bartram won't welcome the reruns. Kevin Bond didn't think much of it either, but they did. Barely a minute later, though, Bournemouth were level. Effin Okoku put in the cross. The Brentford central defence missed the ball, but Jimmy Quinn didn't. Bournemouth left it late to book their place in round three. The match was deep in injury time, and Denny Mundy pumped the ball in. Quinn shot and it was the Brentford keeper's turn to make a mistake, sparing Bartram's blushes and helping Bournemouth through 2-1. The top of the third division have been spectacular away from home this season. And at Bournemouth, they came up with a spectacular opening goal. Right back Jamie Bates lobbing Bournemouth's keeper Vince Bartram from fully 40 yards out, and that was either the loveliest or the luckiest goal of the season. Not many would have backed 3rd Division Bournemouth to come back from that, but they did. Northern Ireland striker Jimmy Quinn heading home an equaliser just a minute later. And popping up again to grab the winner right on the final whistle. Not the best of matches for either goalkeeper, and it's safe to bet that Brentford's Graham Benstead with the green jersey and the red face won't want to tell his grandchildren too much about that one. Bournemouth sneaking it then right on the wire, and Harry Redknapp's team now entertain Newcastle United. With even average luck, Bournemouth wouldn't be needing a replay in Newcastle. Effa Nikoku did his best to make sure of that, but Newcastle's keeper Tommy Wright was equal to his shot. And Wright's injured ankle didn't stop him turning Mark Morris's goal-bound header over the bar either. Even when Nikoku thought he'd got round Wright just before half-time, he found he hadn't. Wright was beaten after half-time, but Scott nipped in to clear Bond's header. And in the end, it needed a great save from Vince Bartram, Wright's opposite number, to stop a deflected shot putting Bournemouth out. 